The Middle Ages are rich with legends and mysteries, but few are as perplexing and enchanting as the tale of the green children of Woolpit. This story, set in the 12th century in the small village of Woolpit in Suffolk, England, has fascinated historians, folklorists, and the curious alike for centuries. It is a narrative that blends elements of folklore, history, and the unexplained, capturing the imagination with its enigmatic details and enduring questions. The story begins during the reign of King Stephen when villagers of Woolpit were working in the fields. They discovered two children, a brother and sister, emerging from one of the wolf pits that gave the village its name. These children were unusual not only because they were lost and alone, but because their skin was an unusual shade of green. They wore strange clothing and spoke an unknown language, baffling the villagers who found them. The green-skinned children were taken to the home of Sir Richard de Calnham, where they were cared for. Despite their evident hunger, the children initially refused all food offered to them. Eventually, they accepted raw, broad beans, which they consumed ravenously. Over time, they adapted to more typical human food, and their green color gradually faded. This change suggested that their peculiar pigmentation might have been related to their diet, possibly a form of malnutrition. As the children became more accustomed to their new surroundings, they began to learn English. This allowed them to tell their story, which only deepened the mystery. They claimed to come from a place called St. Martin's Land, where the sun never shone brightly and the light was like twilight. According to their account, they had been tending their father's flock when they heard a loud noise and found themselves in the wolf pit. Sadly, the boy who was weaker and less robust than his sister fell ill and died shortly after their arrival. His sister, however, survived and continued to live in the area. She was baptized and eventually integrated into English society, working as a servant in Richard de Calne's household. Some accounts even suggest she married a man from King's Lynn, Norfolk, living out her life in relative obscurity, but accepted by her community. Several theories have been proposed to explain the story of the Green Children. Some historians suggest they were Flemish orphans. During the period in question, there was a significant Flemish presence in England, particularly in East Anglia. The Flemish were persecuted and many fled or were killed. The children might have been the survivors of such an attack, their green hue possibly due to malnutrition, which can cause a condition known as chlorosis, giving the skin a greenish tint. This theory is supported by the geographical and political context of the time. The Flemish weavers were known to settle in pockets around eastern England, and during the upheaval of the reign of King Stephen, many were targeted. It's plausible the children had fled from such conflict and their disorientation and unfamiliarity with English could be attributed to this traumatic displacement. Others interpret the tale through the lens of folklore and myth. The description of St. Martin's Land bears similarities to the concept of an otherworldly realm common in medieval folklore. The perpetual twilight described by the children echoes many legends of fairy lands or subterranean worlds where the light is always dim and life is markedly different from the surface world. Some speculate that the children might be connected to the mythical fairy folk or inhabitants of a subterranean world. This interpretation suggests the children's sudden appearance in Woolpit was a result of a passageway between worlds accidentally crossed by the unwitting siblings. The green color of their skin could be linked to the verdant and magical nature often attributed to the fairy realm. Psychologists and literary analysts have explored the story's symbolic elements. The children's green skin might symbolize their alienation and difference, reflecting societal views on outsiders and the unknown. Their eventual integration into society could be seen as a metaphor for the process of assimilation and acceptance. Modern scientific interpretations have also been offered. Some suggest the children might have been suffering from hyperchromic anemia, a condition that results from a lack of iron and is often caused by a poor diet. This condition can cause the skin to appear greenish. The eventual disappearance of the green hue after consuming a varied diet supports this hypothesis. Another theory posits that the children could have been suffering from arsenic poisoning which was more common in medieval times due to the use of arsenic in various processes. Chronic arsenic exposure can cause a greenish tint to the skin, and the children's eventual improvement with proper food and care could indicate a recovery from such poisoning. The story of the green children was first recorded by two chroniclers, Ralph of Coggeshall, who wrote about it in his 
Chronicon Anglicanum, and William of Newburgh, who included it in his Historia Rerum Anglicarum. These accounts, written in the late 12th and early 13th centuries, provide slightly different details, but both capture the essence of the mystery. Ralph of Coggeshall's account is more detailed, offering a vivid description of the children's appearance, their language, and their gradual integration into English society. William of Newburgh's account, on the other hand, is more concise, but still provides crucial insights into the cultural and historical context of the story. Over the centuries, the tale has inspired numerous adaptations in literature, art, and media. It has appeared in poetry, novels, and children's books, each retelling, adding new layers to the legend. Folklorists continue to study the green children as part of broader investigations into medieval folklore and mythology. The story is often cited in discussions of fairy lore, otherworldly encounters, and the boundaries between myth and reality. It serves as a case study in how legends can evolve and persist over time, shaped by cultural, historical and social influences. The tale of the green children of Woolpit remains one of the most intriguing medieval mysteries. It has been retold in various forms, from historical accounts by chroniclers like Ralph of Coggeshall and William of Newburgh, to modern adaptations in literature and media. The story's blend of the mysterious and the mundane ensures its place in the pantheon of enduring legends,